by even greater use of clean coal technology, solar and wind energy, and clean, safe nuclear power. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Happy New Year, slaves, and welcome to episode 4 of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. Well, we don't care if you are fat in the new year. I am your host, The Stimulator, and as of the time of this recording, George W. Bush has 724 days left in office. Yeah, I know. That's two more motherfucking years of this douchebag. So, with every year, King George, our favorite Skull and Bones member, is required to talk to us and tell us what's on his mind. Yes, I did say member, bone, and bush in the same sentence. America's on the verge of technological breakthroughs that will enable us to live our lives less dependent on oil. And these technologies will help us be better stewards of the environment. And they will help us to confront the serious challenge of global climate change. Wow. We've all been waiting for this moment. Speculation and anticipation were high this week as we waited to see if Bush would say global warming. Global climate change. Close enough. In an unprecedented move, Bush dissed Michael Crichton and our favorite whooping boy, James Inhofe, by acknowledging that us humans are partly to blame for global warming on national TV. It really makes me wonder why now. Or could it be that Bush's bosses at Exxon gave him permission to finally admit this? Last week, Exxon announced that it stopped funding the Competitive Enterprise Institute a group that ran ads downplaying the role of greenhouse gases in global warming. Global warming alarmists claim the glaciers are melting because of carbon dioxide from the fuels we use. Let's force people to cut back, they say. But we depend on those fuels to grow our food, move our children, light up our lives. And as for carbon dioxide, it isn't smog or smoke. It's what we breathe out and plants breathe in. Carbon dioxide. They call it pollution. We call it life. Exxon spokesman Mark Bordeaux said its position on climate change has been widely misunderstood and as a result of that we have been clarifying and talking more about what our position is. Its position might be more clear next week when the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change releases its, its report Climate Change 2007 which might just tell us how fucked we really are. Andrew Weaver, a Canadian climate scientist and co-author of the document, said the report isn't a smoking gun. Climate is a battalion of intergalactic smoking missiles. My New Year's Revolutions by The Stimulator 1. Overthrow the... Uh, no, no, that's too ambitious. Okay. 1. Lose weight. Mm, uh, I'm already sexy. Fuck that. Hmm. Work less? Yeah. I like that. I hate fucking work. Two, spend more time with my monkey. That'll get me some more brownie points. Three, learn to grow my own food. Every year, we go through the motions of writing New Year's resolutions. I believe it's a great practice, but most people, including myself, set very ambitious goals, and we usually give up after a couple of months. Most of these goals have to do with our personal appearance and how others perceive us and not much to do with our personal happiness or reducing our impact on the planet. This year, my goal is to overthrow my inner dictator. I call this my New Year's Revolutions, a short list of two easy goals and a more ambitious one that could be done over time. If you have your own New Year's Revolutions and would like me to read them on the show, email me, revolutions at submedia.tv. It's a fact that most Americans hate their jobs. If you ask me what should I do, I would say fucking quit. But I know this is not an option for a lot of people. In searching for a better answer, I bring you Conrad Schmidt. Conrad is the leader of the Workless Party and author of the book, Workers of the World, Relax. Hey Conrad, how are you? I'm doing good, doing good. So, how did you manage to get a four-day work week? The way I managed to get a four-day work week 
was quite simple. I just went into my boss's office and I asked him how many people he thought were actually productive there on a Monday and a Friday. And he had to confess that there was maybe one or two out of a hundred people. And all I said was, uh, how about I don't show up on a Friday and you don't pay me? And so I reduced my work week to a four day work week and started doing a lot more with my extra time. In your book, you say that working less is a solution to our environmental problems. Can you explain? It's a very, very simple explanation. It's a, such a simple solution. It's like we're, uh, we're burning up all the planet's resources. So the solution, hey, slow down. <laughs> and we can prove our standard of living by doing it. It's an obvious solution. Yeah, but how is working linked to the way we're fucking up the planet? Our work ethic can be linked to most environmental and social problems. Uh, consumerism is a consequence of our work ethic. The idea is that we currently we work really, really hard, but what are we doing? For the most part, we're making things that we don't really need, and uh, it's not good for the planet. If we work less, make less thing, make less of the stuff we don't really need. Um, still make all the important things that we do need but also have more time for the essential and important work of music, art, culture, family, community, the things that we are neglecting and that are essential for creating a healthy society. And how do you know this is going to work? Many European countries have a reduced work week. Uh, France is at 35, Germany is at 37, Germany they have 8 weeks vacation, France has 6 weeks vacation. And what are the consequences over there? Well. There's a recent paper that was issued um, by a group of Harvard professors that uh, show that the average European will consume half as much energy as a North American, and will consume half as much cons have uh, consume half as much consumer goods as the average North American. Well, thanks, Conrad. I like Conrad's book so much that I am offering it at submedia.tv. If you want to find out more about Conrad and the Workless Party go to worklessparty.org. And that about wraps it up for this week's edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. Join us next week when we'll deconstruct King George's solutions for the coming energy crisis. Aloha. Ha 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 ha!